it's another day at the lair We're working together Ain't no job that's too big Cause we can make it better We've got Rob in the robot Teach us to build Work hard together For a better future We've got Rob in the robot And RB2 Awesome show, Robin the Robot. I can't wait for you to see it. Time to use your login. Let's dive right in. I'm Chris. And I'm Charisma. And today, we will be discussing the power of water. Water provides more than enough nutrients that our bodies need. Water provides energy to not only our bodies, but also to society in the form of electrical power. Water power can be harnessed from a variety of sources, such as giant dams or giant waterfalls. Did you know that Guyana is home to Kaitra Falls, the world's largest single drop waterfall? Did you also know that it is possible to capture part of the kinetic energy generated by falling water and convert it to a useful form instead of letting it all go to waste? This is exactly what a hydroelectric power station does. In the case of a waterfall, gravitational potential energy of water first changes into the kinetic energy of water. This kinetic energy is partially converted into electrical energy by a generator. People have been capturing the energy and moving water for thousands of years. And today, it's still a powerful resource that can generate clean, renewable, and affordable electricity. You see, we harness energy from flowing water and convert it to electricity. That's what we call hydroelectric power, or hydropower. Water flows from a higher elevation to a lower elevation and a hydropower facility uses turbines and generators to convert this motion into electricity. America has been using hydropower to generate electricity for more than 100 years now. And today, about 7% of all our electricity is generated from hydropower, making it the largest source of renewable power. So, what makes hydropower renewable? It's simple water. Water evaporates into clouds and recycles back to earth as precipitation. The water cycle is constantly recharging and can be used to produce electricity along the way. How does it work? Basically, there are several ways hydropower technologies can generate electricity. You may recognize dams, like this one. This technology is called an impoundment. The impoundment stores water in a reservoir. When the water is released, it flows through and spins a turbine turning a generator that produces electricity. Here's another technology. This is a diversion. It channels a portion of a river through a canal or pipe into a turbine and generator system. What's cool about this method is that it uses the natural flow of the river and usually doesn't require a large dam. And have a look at this. This is called pumped storage hydropower. Basically, it works like a huge battery. To charge the battery, Water is pumped back up into a reservoir during periods of low energy use, often during the night when people are using fewer appliances. Then, when people need more power during the day, the water can be released to produce electricity. We'll be right back. Hi everyone, my name is Asha Christian and I am one of the co-founders of STEM Guyana. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about our newest program, which we'll be rolling out to youths between the ages of 7 and 16 who are from Guyana and the diaspora. Next week, we'll be introducing our STEM Guyana International Club program, where students of Guyanese heritage from around the world will be meeting twice weekly for a fun and enriching academic experience. Students will have an opportunity to strengthen their science, technology, engineering, and math skills, all while learning how to code. Our integrated curriculum combines basic coding concepts with foundational and advanced math, science, English, and technology concepts. We've also added a gifted math component where we'll be challenging outstanding math students at every level with the intent to move them one or two grades ahead academically. 
Our goal is to expose all of the gifted technology students from across the country to a global experience and to enrich their academic experience by encouraging them to develop important critical thinking, problem solving, conflict resolution, and collaboration skills. We're looking for the innovators of tomorrow, and we're looking forward to your participation. For registration information, go to stemguyana.com, and we do have scholarships available. position is potential energy. Energy that a moving object has due to its motion is kinetic energy. How cool is that? But let's move on to today's mission. Today's mission, should you choose to accept it, focuses on a water mill. A water mill is a mill that uses hydro or water power by a water wheel to drive a mechanical process such as milling flour, metal shaping, or hammering. Hey students, you're looking at a watermill in action. This is Sir Joshua, by the way, and today I want you to take a look at how energy generated from the flow of water, or hydropower, helps grind grain. As you can see, the mill worker in this video is feeding grain into the mill, which is then crushed into flour using hydropower. Flowing water turns a large wheel with fins attached, also known as a turbine, inside of which are whole grains. As the wheel spins, these whole grains are crushed and crushed until they become flour. The flour is then collected, packaged, and used in the bakery to bake delicious breads. Before we tackle today's mission of designing a water mill, it's important that we're all on the same page with how we approach today's challenges. That's right, I'm talking about the scientific method and the importance of scientific inquiry. The scientific method is a method of research in which a problem is identified, relevant data is gathered, a hypothesis is formulated from this data, and the hypothesis is then tested. Data is then analyzed, researchers then draw conclusions and communicate results. Oh and hypothesis is just a guess. We'll be right back. We are the children of Gaia. We are preparing ourselves to develop our nation. Whether we become engineers, scientists, doctors, artists, or entrepreneurs, we will need to develop our ability to think critically, to solve problems, to work collaboratively, to solve conflicts, and to communicate effectively. These are all skills we learn in our STEM Guyana Club. Support so STEM Guyana programs today. We're back! You would think that I built my totally rad hideout all at once, right? No way. It took planning. It took brain power, okay? Noggin work. Like, lots of it. But step by step, slowly but surely, my totally rad secret layer came into shape. Orby, come here! Let me introduce you to everyone. Everyone, this is Orby, my little sidekick. He helped me with missions. Hey, where are you going? Ah, silly Orby. Always at those flowers. Anyway, let's get to the mission. We're not just gonna head first into it, we're going to plan it out. Step by step, we're gonna test it out. Step by step, we're gonna brainstorm every step of the way. Bit by bit, with lots of noggin power. We're gonna make this work. We're gonna turn blank pages into full pages. We're gonna turn those pages into physical, real life, real world structures. Together, we're gonna build an amazing water mill. But you know what's the real superpower? Your noggin. Let's do it. Noggin time. For inspiration, let's check in with one of our real world superheroes in training. It's time to meet someone like you, a little kid with big dreams. Hey Robin, don't call me little. Yeah Robin, don't call her little. Today, our mission will focus on designs created with the MRT-1 robot kit. Think you can help? Of course I can! Do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh oh, my energy is waning. I'm gonna need a math boost. Welcome everyone to our quick math segment. Today, I will be adding fractions with different denominators. But first, I will be introducing the parts of a fraction. 
The two top numbers are called the numerators. The, the line is called the vinculum, the fraction bar, or the division bar. The two bottom numbers are called the denumerators. And of course, you know our plus sign. Now I will work the sum for you. 2 by 3 is 6. 1 by 3 is 3. Then we multiply diagonally again from the top right to the bottom left. 1 by 2 is 2. Then we add 3 and 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. We bring back the six. Now we have a proper fraction because the numerator is smaller than the denumerator. Whoa! That was scary! Thanks for saving me! We'll be right back. We are the hands that will lift entire societies up and out of poverty, and transform quality of life for the whole world. We are the minds who will work together to solve the greatest challenges facing our planet. The ones we know now and those yet to come. That's why it's so important to support STEM education and initiatives like First Global. By investing in us, in me, you are investing in the future of the world. We're back! Today, we will be making a water mill. This is the MRC robot kit we will be using to make our water mill. And these are the parts we will be using to make our water mill. First, we have the blocks. They come in different sizes, shapes, and colors. These are the angle blocks and these are the adapters. Next, we have the bushes. The gray bush is hard, while the yellow bush is soft. Here we have the shelves. Now I'll hand you over to Christopher. These are the motor and card reader cables. Here is the triaxis DC motor. This is the main board. This is the card reader and the card to go with it. And here we have two gears. We'll be right back. Place your child at the most affordable private school in Guyana with a national curriculum taught with an African-centered approach open to anyone. Be a part of the Calaco experience with in-person teaching in a large, well-ventilated facility once per week, complemented by virtual classes for the remaining four days. Class sizes never exceed 12 students to allow for a socially distanced space and individualized attention. Enroll today. Our experienced and capable staff look forward to share the excitement of learning with your child. robot kit because I can see my ideas come to life. When I use a scientific method, everything works out so well and it makes me really happy. That's great to hear, Karen. Are you almost done? Oh, I am. Ready to see? It, it failed. I don't know what I did wrong. 
Maybe you can look over the program. What do you think, Robin? Michelangelo was an Italian sculptor, painter, architect and poet who was born in the Republic of Florence. He was an unparalleled influence on the development of Western art. Do you know of the Michelangelo statues? He first had to imagine it, then plan it out with sketches, before tackling the actual process of building the statue from rock. Then, he had to chisel away, one stroke at a time, slowly shaping the masterpiece into view, which then was further refined and polished, transforming over a long and trusted process to create a timeless, immortal piece of historical art. Do you think he got everything the way he wanted on the first build? Of course not. He tried and tried. It's okay if you don't get everything right on the first try, as long as you're resilient and keep trying. It's gonna be okay. I think you should do whatever you think is best. I see the error, Robin. I can fix it. I think I can make it better. I can upgrade. High five! So hi guys, we're finished here now. Let's see if the washing will work. Wow, it works! That's dancers, look! We'll be right back! How do we help our children prepare for a world of rapidly advancing technology? Where will our children learn to build robots and code while also strengthening their soft skills? Where will your children actually have fun while they learn? The answer is simple. A STEM Guyana After School Club. Students learn to build robots, create phone apps, develop websites, and so much more in our multidisciplinary clubs. Join the existing STEM Guyana Club network today or sponsor your own STEM Guyana Club at stemguyana.com. Make sure to follow our Facebook page page at STEM Guyana. We're back! It's okay if you don't get everything right on the first try, as long as you're resilient and keep trying. Today, we saw the scientific process in action. First, we research. Then, we generate ideas. Next, we set about the design. After that, we build. Once we build, we test. And once we've examined the results, we make improvements. We update, we upgrade. We're not always successful on the first try. That's normal. It's all part of the process, like every other challenge in life. So don't give up. Take a step back. Take another look. Use that noggin of yours. Let's keep trying until we get it right. Whether you're trying to learn how to read or memorize your times tables or learning how to code with computers, don't give up when you get frustrated. Just keep pounding away at that rock. Pick up that chisel and get to work, step by step. Then one day, you'll wake up and realize your dream is coming true. For now, I say to you, mission accomplished. We totally slayed that watermill problem. Make sure to come back next time and see what it takes to make another dream come true.